Hi, so in the previous video we derived this more general case of the Euler equation and now we're going to use this to look at what happens when we have income shocks either temporary or permanent in the permanent income hypothesis. So to start with we're going to make an assumption where we have that our discount rate multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate is equal to 1 or this is equivalent to saying that our, our consumer in their utility function is discounting at the same rate as the interest rate. Now this simplifies things a lot because our consumer is discounting at the same rate as the market is discounting past from future consumption and so we can link together our budget constraints and utility functions very nicely. So if we substitute in that this term is now 1 into our um, Euler equation we have we now get out this very simple result that the marginal utility in these two periods t and t plus 1 are equal and from this we can infer that consumption in these two periods is equal because we have the same utility representation in them and so we, we must have the same consumption in both of these periods and so this means that for the entire budget constraint in period t or for all periods t, we must have that ct equals ct plus 1 uh, for all t. So we can now rewrite our budget constraint to and simplify things quite a bit thanks to this assumption. Okay, so we can write our budget constraint, but now we're going to start at a, a, any general period t, and periods beyond that we're going to denote s. So we're still keeping a very similar form of the budget constraint, but now we count income for each period s, which can be t plus 1, t plus 2, t plus 3. We just call that s for each of these off to infinity, and we're compounding interest not with respect to period 1, but period t. We have an initial income in period t there uh, from, from our parent, and this is equal to the infinite sum of consumption Again, very similar to before, but we're just using this S and a general term T. But what we're going to do to this consumption term is notice that we can view this as an infinite geometric sum. And if we want to sum something to infinity, we can use this equation, which is the first term. Um, the first term of a geometric sequence divided by 1 minus the common ratio multiplying this geometric sequence. So this R here doesn't stand for the interest rate, it stands for our common ratio. And if we look closely at the this infinite sum of consumptions, we can notice that this sum to the infinity, our first term, is given by consumption in period T because if we set s equal to t at our first term, that will count, that will be at 0. Uh, so we're just ct over 1, which gives us ct as our first term. And then we are over 1 over, our common ratio even is 1 over 1 plus r, because in each period we just multiply by 1 plus r, because we're just compounding interest to discount consumption into the future. And so this infinite geometric sum is actually equal to 1 plus r over r multiplied by ct, if we just multiply top and bottom by 1 plus r and do a bit of cleaning up. So now we have, this is a much nicer representation of this infinite sum that we can plug in there. And now we have a nicer form of the budget constraint. And then what we're going to do is rearrange for ct on one side of the equation just by multiplying across this 1 plus r over r to the other side of the equation. Okay, so by rearranging the equation in that way, we get out this equation. It should be quite straightforward as to how we've just multiplied across the 1 plus r over r term. And so now what we're going to do is we see that this is quite an ugly sum to infinity as well. So we're going to deal with that in a way that we break off. We're going to break off consumption in period T, which, as we said, is our initial period T. So we don't have to divide this by any interest rates because it's our current period income. And then we still have 
the remainder of this infinite sum, which is sum from infinity starting at period t. But now we're going to assume that all the income in every other period is just a constant y. So we just have some permanent income, let's say like a salary. Every year we earn the same amount. And we discount this at starting from 1 plus r, s minus t, but plus 1 because we've we're summing from time t, but we've taken out the first period yt. So we now have broken this broken this into two terms, our our current what we might view as temporary income, which could be anything, and our then permanent income in the future, which is just given by y. And what we can now do, now that we've split the terms up and got this term, this sum to infinity, is we can again use our sum to an infinite geometric sequence of a over 1 minus r. So we will do that, and I won't go through all the workings for this, but we, we get that this, this term to infinity is actually equal to y over r. Uh, just by, just by, if you just use the initial term and the common ratio, you'll get out of this result. I won't spend, spend lots of time going over that. So, and we can't forget to add back on our temporary income. So we have now turned this, this awful uh, sum to infinity into this much simpler term that includes our temporary income in this period and our permanent income level y just divided by the interest rate. So now we can substitute that back into our uh, our rearranged budget constraint that we used before, and now we have got this condition or this budget constraint into a much nicer form with no more infinite sums. We've got rid of them all. So I will just write that in blue over here and try and squeeze it in. We have now got that ct equals r over 1 plus r in brackets, our temporary income plus our permanent income over R plus our initial endowment all in brackets. So that is what our consumption in period T is equal to and now we can start finally looking at income shocks using this nice equation. So let's do that. So here's the consumption equation that we derived just a minute ago and so very simply we can go straight into it let's consider a permanent income shock permanent income so we're changing permanent income so we can look at the impacts of that on consumption by differentiating our permanent income or differentiating our consumption with respect to permanent income now what is permanent income shock it means we change our income in every period so we're changing this y term and we're also changing this term in our current in our current period uh, so we're we're not we're not going to ignore this temporary income term because that is our income right now and we're, we're changing income for every period including the current period we we just uh, split these up so that we could write this consumption formula or equation in a much nicer form so our permanent income shock will be given by differentiating differentiating our consumption with respect to again my pen is terrible differentiating with respect to yt and also plus differentiating with respect to permanent income y and what what do we find by this so if we differentiate first with respect to yt well this yt term is just going to go equal to 1 so we just get out the the fraction in the bracket so it's r over 1 plus r and then plus 1 over r when we differentiate if we're looking at this y differentiating with respect to y uh, we get out 1 plus r in this equation and again we multiply it with the term outside the brackets so we'll get r over 1 plus r plus um, 1 over 1 plus r because we times this 1 over r times r over 1 plus r this is equal to 1 plus r over 1 plus r so it's equal to 1 and this this is our marginal propensity to cons consume by the way by differenti differentiating we're looking at how consumption changes with our income 
and that is the definition of marginal propensity to consume. So MPC equals 1 when we have a shock to current income. We, we've noticed that in previous videos that when we change the income in every period we are just going to tend to increase our consumption by the change in income because we don't, we don't have to borrow and save into future periods using, using our income because we increase our income in every single period. And in previous videos, we said that this MPC will equal to 1 if we have that this condition is met. The discount rate multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate is equal to 1. But we've already assumed that in this model, so we can just say that our MPC is equal to 1 when we have a permanent income shock. Now let's instead look at a temporary income shock. Temporary income shock. And this is going to be a lot simpler. As we said, this YT term is our temporary income term. That's how we defined it when we when we broke up our infinite sum in this way. So very simply, D, the derivative of consumption in time T with respect to YT is equal to R over 1 plus R. And clearly R over 1 plus R is less than 1 because the denominator is greater than the numerator. So if we have a shock in income today, we increase income in YT, period T, we are going to save some of that increase in income for future periods, and we have income or consumption smoothing again. We prefer to spread our consumption out over time if we can, because that's what our utility function says we should do. We have convex utility. So. That, that is what happens. We have consumption smoothing with a temporary income shock and with permanent income shocks, we just have marginal propensity to consume equal to one. This is of course depending on the assumption that we made that we said the discount rate plus one multiplied by one plus R is equal to one, but this is quite a common simplifying assumption when we're just at an intermediate macroeconomics level. So that just about wraps up this video. Make sure to check out the playlist for future videos and the previous videos. In the next one, we should be looking at Hall's random walk hypothesis. Subscribe for all future videos. And if this was at all useful, please do drop a like rating. Thank you.